It's been almost three weeks since the attempted assassination of President Trump, and we still, we know basically nothing, man. We know nothing about the shooter. We know almost nothing about all the failures that just basically let it happen. The corporate media, they've essentially moved on. They don't want to talk about it anymore. You got Facebook soft censoring the bloody fist photo, and you got big tech basically trying to whitewash the story out of existence. You got all that work in and still every single day, the internet gives us more video that forces us to ask even more questions. And I'm going to show you a video that I found on X and it shows local police weapons drawn, freaking out, surrounding the building that Crooks was on for about a minute before he took his shot. And it is absolutely going to blow your mind. And to my point about big tech whitewashing the story, guys, whatever device you're on right now, Go to Google and type assassination attempt on just those three words and just look at the populated search possibilities to pop up. That is going to tell you everything you'll ever need to know about big tech bias and all these powerful forces are at work, right? And while you're doing that, take a look at these local law enforcement text messages that just became aware, just became unearthed by Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, man, who is honestly... This guy in his office, they're doing more work to get to the bottom of this than I think any other member of government, anybody. We are learning new details now in that assassination attempt against the former president, now suggesting an earlier timeline than what authorities had claimed. Text messages obtained by Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley from the Beaver County officials, that's the county to the west of Butler County, show that law enforcement assigned to secure the rally were aware of a gunman about 90 minutes before Trump took the stage. That'd be around 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, CB Cotton live in Butler, PA again to begin another week on this matter. CB, good morning. Bill, good morning. These text messages now revealing that local sn- counter snipers had spotted gunman Thomas Matthew Crooks earlier than previously reported. Bill, as you said, these text messages were obtained by Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley from the Beaver County Emergency Services Unit. And the first message was sent from a local counter sniper who spotted Crooks at a picnic table at around 4.26 p.m. That officer wrote, quote, someone followed our lead and snuck in and parked by our cars just so you know. I'm just letting you know because you see me go out with my rifle and put it in my car. So he knows you guys are up there. Less than an hour later, Crooks had moved and was reportedly right below the local counter sniper team who were on the second floor in a warehouse building. One of one of the counter snipers then took photos of Crooks, which were later exchanged in a group chat with a text message reading, quote, I did see him with a rangefinder looking towards stage. FYI, if you want to notify Secret Service snipers to look out, I lost sight of him. These photos were reportedly relayed to the Secret Service posted in a command center. But according to the Washington Post, the Secret Service agents tasked with directly protecting Trump were never alerted. And now for the first time, the local counter snipers reveal what they saw that afternoon. He was looking up and down the building and just wandering around and it just seemed out of place. I assumed that there would be somebody coming out to, uh, you know, speak with the, this individual or, you know, find out what's going on. Just think about that for just a minute, man. Those local sniper, counter sniper teams, they observe the guy for hours. They get pictures of the guy. They watch him using his rangefinder, and they relay every single bit of that information to one contact that they have for the Secret Service. And that one person doesn't relay any of that information to the agents that are actually responsible for protecting Donald Trump on the stage, right? If I were investigating this, I would want to know every single thing about that person and why a guy like that or a gal like that wouldn't pass on that kind of information, right? But another thing I think they need to look at is how they even communicate in the first place. You know, if if everyone there is on the same team and have the same goals, why are they not able to communicate? And I, I totally get that the Secret Service, they need to have some sort of secure communications. I get that. But everyone in that operation should be able to pass information like literally instantaneously, right? You shouldn't have to text a guy and hope that he radios some other guy the information that you're texting. That just that there's no way that makes any kind of sense. You know, communication is key in literally every single thing that you do. We were supposed to get a face-to-face briefing with the Secret Service snipers 
um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because that never happened, and we had no communication with the Secret Service. You had no communication with the Secret Service at all on that Saturday? Not until after the shooting. And by then? It was too late. None of that makes any sense, man. Why would you involve local law enforcement? Why would you rely on them to help you do your job in protecting someone and not even meet with them, not even talk with them and not have any kind of action plan that puts everybody there on the same page? You know, in in a past life, I was a wildland firefighter, man, and I've been on giant complex fires and I've been on very, very small single asset fires and literally everything in between. And I have never, ever been on a fire that didn't have command, action plan, and communication. And I just, I just can't, I don't get it, man. What we're hearing about this assassination attempt is honestly almost impossible to believe. The Secret Service has a $300 billion budget, man, and they, they really have only one real objective. And this, it just makes it also impossible to believe, right? And I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, and it's really, really easy to get lost in the weeds on this stuff. But the only thing, honestly, that seems to explain everything that we actually know, and obviously there's a lot we don't know, but the only thing that explains everything we know is incompetence, is Secret Service incompetence. And honestly, if there, if there is any real conspiracy here, it's the conspiracy of resource allocation. You know, there, there, doesn't, be, there doesn't seem to be enough assets involved. And especially when you don't have enough assets, when you don't have enough people, you don't have enough staffing that makes the incompetence of the people that you do have all the more unacceptable. So how do you know if Greg's concerns about crooks are being relayed properly? We don't. It's, we have to assume that when he put that information out to command, that command took that information and did something with it. We don't know if they did. None of the concerns appears to have reached members of Trump's Secret Service detail. The Washington Post reports they've complained they were never made aware of the warnings. Again, man, I mean, that's where this thing starts, right? Who was receiving that information and why, why would they ever do nothing with information like that? What, they should be passing on literally everything that they hear. I, I don't even know how it's possible, right? And just, just think about this, right? What would have happened if just one member of law enforcement stopped the guy? Just ID'd the guy, interrogated the guy, just talked to him a little bit. There's, I believe, a really, really good chance that he would have gotten scared. He would have gotten cold feet and he would have probably gotten the hell out of there, right? They had multiple opportunities to change things with just really easy, really basic police work. And that's, honestly, that's really why I don't really buy into the conspiracy theories that Crooks was some kind of patsy. Obviously, admittedly, you know, he'd make a picture perfect freaking patsy, low internet exposure. Nobody really knows him. The guy's a perfect patsy, but the fact that he'd been tagged and observed for hours at literally every single step of the way makes him a pretty bad patsy. You know, he should have been caught. What it makes him is a really, really lucky, crazy person, right? And I found this video on X that literally shows police actively looking for the guy, guns drawn, so they know how serious this is. You know, the guy's already been seen on the roof. And this is what I'm going to show you is just how important communication is. You know, Trump is speaking and local cops are scrambling. They know that they have a gunman up on the roof literally right now, probably taking aim at the president right now. And I'm going to let this play, man. It's, it's a long one. But tell me in the comments, guys, what do you see here and what would you do if you were local police? There's something going on in this building. And said I'm here with you fighting like hell to get a senator elected and to make sure. Oh my god. There's somebody in this building. And it's not easy. Because we have millions and millions of people in this country. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have drug dealers. We have people that just not be here. 
and record a history with the best water. In fact, if they could ever put up a chart, I don't know if they could do it. You guys have access to that chart, but I love it so much. You don't mind if I go off teleprompter, do you? <laughs> this is not going to be just a story where you're going to explain it. Oh, oh this is hot! You guys are doing it. They're getting better with time. My guys, take a look at that chart. Take a look at the arrow on the bottom. See the big red, red arrow, right? So that's what I'm going to do. That's the lowest point, and that comes right from the government services. Comes right out of Border Patrol. And take a look at that. So that arrow is the lowest amount of illegal immigration ever in recorded history. And then. Make yourself small, bro. I don't know what's going on. Get down, guys, get down. Yeah, just get down. Get behind this tree with me. Get, get behind this tree. Get behind this tree, guys. No, no, no. I'm just safe back here. Yeah, here, here. They fucking picked that dude off. Did they pick him off? Fuck yeah, I saw a big poof of hair go up in the air. Oh, they fuck yeah. Right fuck yeah. Big poof of hair. Holy shit, guys. What happened That's over here? He got four shots off. Are you fucking shitting me? This is fucking crazy, dude. I can't believe dude, I got all... This is national fucking news. I can't believe I got all that on camera, dude. I was in the middle of it. Like a headshot? Kill confirmed, he said. Nobody said kill confirmed? He said kill, kill, kill confirmed. Yeah, so what do you see there, right? For me, a few things jump out, right? Especially if you've been following any of the uh, trajectory or sound investigations that are happening online. The first thing that jumps out to me is the place is absolutely crawling with cops. I mean, cops are freaking everywhere. Yet somehow this 20 year old crazy person gets a ladder, a gun, a rangefinder, and himself past all them and up onto an uncovered roof. It's just it's, it's, it's almost too incredible, right? But Another thing that jumps out, you know, really does show how close that water tower really was. And, you know, I don't know much about Overwatch, but I feel like it probably would have been a pretty amazing place to have an over Overwatch if the Secret Service had literally dedicated just a few more people. You know, what I would have imagined would be the proper number of assets to an event that size and with that kind of risk level. Right. It's just crazy. An another thing I notice from that vantage, at least all eight shots actually sound pretty similar. They actually sound like the same gun and go back to listen to that if, if you, if you really need to, but you know, that's been a pretty serious point of contention in all the theorizing that's been happening in the information vacuum that the government has left for us, but it's all crazy stuff, man. I mean, cops are everywhere. They look pretty frantic. They're freaking out. And you can tell that they know something serious is happening because again, they all have their weapons drawn. And that makes me think, you know, I, I know that this is something you would probably only see on TV. I guess this probably doesn't happen in the real world. But wouldn't it have been smart, you know, if you really think that there's a gunman on the roof and you have no way of communicating with the Secret Service, you can hear the president talking. What would have happened if just one of those cops back there just discharged their weapon a few times into the grass? Right. I don't know if that would have done anything. It would have been creative. I'm sure the guy probably would have got fired. But that'd be one way to communicate for sure. But I don't know. That's probably a really bad idea. That's just stream of thought. But 
Guys, that's just my take. I figured you deserve to see that. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you haven't already, guys, share these videos and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.